welcome in everyone to our Bible study on 1st and 2nd Timothy, Life in the Household of God. We encourage you to grab your Bible, sit down with some friends or family, open up the Word, and let it change your life. Our scripture reading is 2nd Timothy chapter 1, 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers, night and day, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Welcome in everyone. We're glad you joined us for another week of study here in the, in the Word of God. We're looking at the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy and we finished up with 1 Timothy last week and now we're gonna jump into 2 Timothy and start uh, taking that apart a little bit at a time. Things have sure changed since Paul wrote his first letter to Timothy. Uh, there is definitely a change in tone in the letter. There's a darkness kind of hanging over the letter, and that is the darkness of the persecution of Rome that's come down upon the church of Christ. Um, You know, uh, Satan has organized himself very well against the early church, and he's using Rome and the power of the empire and uh, at the hand of Nero and some of the other emperors to come. He has organized himself against the church uh, to bring about a, a, a mighty blow. Uh, In this letter, though, you see a very busy apostle, Paul, who is organizing the church against Satan. And he is setting the church up to be sustained through it and on into the future. And here we are, and he was successful in doing that. Uh, So there's some uh, really good stuff in this letter that mm-hmm. is important to us today in knowing how to uh, work through hardship, mm-hmm. especially how to deal with that, how to maintain our faith and um, and uh, even thrive in it. And so, uh, Anthony, I want to want to ask you to for, for our audience to uh, why don't you give a general context of what what this letter is about, what is yeah. what Paul's trying to do. And then let's hone in on the first seven verses that we're going to study tonight. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, so uh, what makes this book so special is that Paul is nearing the end of his life from what we understand that, you know, he's on executioner row. You know, his, life, his time on earth is short and um, he's getting real serious about what you described, like getting the church ready to fight against the attack of Satan. And for us, you know, it's special because the church continues to face attacks from Satan today. It's not like it stopped under this mm-hmm. time in which Paul was writing. And so right. this, these words are so to be cherished because of what it does for us to get us ready. And there is a dark cloud of suffering that's kind of sort of hanging over the church right now. And Paul is writing to Timothy saying, it's going to be hard, but here's how you can do it. And you're going to be able to do it. And when we come to our first uh, section here, verses 1 through 7, in 2 Timothy, uh, Paul does his normal introductory remarks here. He greets uh, Timothy, reminds him who he is, the apostle called by God, the will of God. He's very intimate with Timothy. He calls him his beloved son. He loves him very much, and he offers him the grace and mercy and peace that the gospel offers all of us. And then he gets into the really setting Timothy up for what is going to transpire in the rest of this book and really the rest of Timothy's life. And If I were to summarize these first seven verses, I think Paul is really trying to tell Timothy, you have already what it takes to navigate through this difficult moment. Not not about you, but like when you think about enduring persecution or facing some suffering or some hard times, I sometimes look at myself and go, I don't have the reserves. I don't have the ability, the strength, the wisdom, the insight to how to navigate this. And what Paul's saying is actually, no, What's in you right now is what you need, but in this suffering, you're going to find out how to use it. And so he really drills him down into that. And it starts, first of all, with in verse five, he says, you have a sincere 
faith. I love that word. Um, He doesn't say, Timothy, you're going to make it because you have a big faith, a strong faith, a massive faith, a special faith. He just says the word sincere. I don't know. What stands out to you about that? Well, the way they use that word in the first century, it means without wax. And Mm -hmm. so what they would do is when a vessel had a crack in it, uh, they would they would hide the crack by waxing it in and then continuing to use it. So the wax gives the idea that it's hiding something broken, yeah, right? Yeah. And so Timothy's faith is without wax, yeah. sincere, that it's not cracked and flawed. It's, yeah. it's really rooted in the right things. And beginning with his introductory verse where he says that he's writing according to the promise of life, he yep. starts right away to say, Your faith is rooted in a promise, a promise of life, not death. And so, like we said, like there's there's a little darkness over this letter. There's people leaving the faith. You know, he's, you know, he's ready to pour himself out, you know, as a drink offering because he's on death row, basically. And uh, he says there is a promise of life that I'm in it for. And Timothy, that your faith will sustain you through if you anchor into the promise of life. That's one Way to yeah, there's another that. anchor, isn't Sincerity. there? Sincerity, yeah. Yeah, so he, he has him, um, you have sincere faith because you're anchored in truth. Yeah. That has been from the beginning of time until now. Mm-hmm. But there's another anchor that Timothy is really, uh, let's let's call it this way, he's born out of something. Yeah, and that, and that is the faith that's been passed down to him through his grandmother mm-hmm. and mother. Um, we were introduced to them in Acts 16, mm-hmm. uh, where Paul meets Timothy it, it mentions there his mother, who was a Jew, who was married to a man who was a Greek. Uh, but he, Timothy was well spoken of as a believer. But here we learn it came from his grandma through his mom mm-hmm. to Timothy. And maybe there's a, a, a little bit of a sentimental tug here, too, that, hey, people before you have, have rooted themselves in this faith. Yeah. They have been faithful through difficulty and hardship, and they've built something. So... Going back to the beginning of time, our forefathers, right? Uh, and Abraham and all those children of his by faith. But now he's just saying, your, your grandmother and your mother, uh, it's in you too. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm convinced it's in you too. And so probably there's a little emotional tug there to mm-hmm. say, hey, um, don't forget what your family yeah. has handed down to you. It's real. But Paul knows the power of ancestry. He references his own. Like I, I served with a clear conscience even though he was sincerely wrong, yeah. right? But he, Although he recognizes the power and influence of ancestry, and I think that's one of the reasons he's so grateful for the grandmother and mother of Timothy because of their ancestry that's been investing in him. And, man, that's a, so important for us, isn't it? We think about if you may not have um, ancestors in the faith, you can find them in the local church, people yeah. who have poured into you. And I think about those who may not be blood relatives of mine, who have lineage in faith, who have been poured into, who have been poured into me, and I feel connected to that ancestry as well. And um, that also leads me to think, okay, I gotta be pouring myself out into other people, having a sincere faith and giving that to others. And so, you know, he's got a sincere faith that's rooted in truth, that's rooted in ancestry, but it's not just um, from Timothy or from other people that how he's gonna make it, is it? No, it's not. There is a power that he is referring to here that comes from God, right? right. So he says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, it's beautiful. So he says, the spirit Timothy has, which is not from Timothy, it was given to Timothy. It's a spirit that is from God. And when you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit is given to us and he's promised in this way. He says he's not a spirit of fear. Um, and that really just means cowardice, a spirit that's afraid, a spirit that's timid, a spirit that just goes, I'm not sure if everything's going to be okay. And so because I'm worried about this, I'm just going to back off and give up. He says, no, you have a spirit of power. Um, that literally just means you have what it takes to get it done. It doesn't mean you, you turn into a Hulk, you know, and you just have all this massive strength. What it means is you have in you the ability to do what needs to be done. You got a spirit of power, a spirit of love. Now, this is rooted in that agape and love, that word love, but it's it, in essence what it's driving towards is our preferences. And preferences meaning this that we want to do what is right and we want to serve and love and care for people. And so we have 
from God a changed will, a changed intention, a changed desire that loves God and loves others. And so because of that love I have for God and for others, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to be afraid. It's interesting how, um, you know, if you think about somebody you love so much and you can envision maybe them being under attack, how quickly you would forget your fear, rise up and go attack, yeah. right? Because yeah. you, you care for and defend yeah. and protect what you love. And the love of God, when it comes into our heart, produces a love for God. You know, like John said, we love him because he first yeah. loved us. That's a great reference. Yeah. And so we got power. You have the ability to do this. You got love. So your motivation is not just trying to prove to people you're somebody special who's not going to give up. It's not pride that Paul appeals to. Because some of us stick with our faith just from pride. You know, like, I just don't want Matt to see me, you know, needing any help or falling short. So I'm going to stick with notes. I love God and I love my fellow man. But then he says, you got a sound mind, which I think is simply just clear thinking that is based upon clear truth. Mm-hmm. Now I see the world, not just a new piece of information, but a whole new lens. I'm eternally driven now. I see the world from the perspective of God, which has given me a whole new way to approach my life. Spirit giving me a sound mind. And so power, love, and sound mind is what liberates us to really, if we take our sincere faith and we have it in what God is able to do, it's the combination of those two coming together that empowers us to walk this life of faith, even when it's hard. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'm reminded of that uh, demoniac that Jesus found when he Mm. crossed the sea and he was not in his right mind. He was possessed by Satan. Uh, He was without clothing. People were afraid of him. And when Jesus healed him, he was found to be clothed and sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. And that's a that's an extreme example mm-hmm. of what happens though with every Christian who gives themselves over to to Christ and receives the Holy yeah. Spirit. We we receive a confident, calm, sound mind, clear thinking, a whole new way based, to think based upon truth. Right. So yeah. truth will do that. You yeah. know, when we when we receive truth, it sets us free. That's mm-hmm. one of the things it sets us free from is just um, is fear, deception, is deception. Yeah. Uh, anxiety, mm-hmm. uh, it sets us free from all those things, right? So, you know, there's, there's some big takeaways, I think, from this passage. The first one for me is it takes a combination of sincere, like you said, without wax, sincere faith in the power of God. It takes both of those things. And so uh, for me, it makes me go, okay, my, I got to make sure my faith is sincere. Um, what does it mean to have a sincere faith? It really means... Um, are you not pretending? Are you not hiding? Like your your illustration with the wax, which is so perfect because it's like, are you pretending that the vessel is right mm. or is it really something that's right? And you get that sincere faith, not by just looking at yourself in the mirror and going, come on, man, have better faith. But like you said from the beginning, it goes back to the eternal yeah. truth that it's rooted in. So if you want to have a more sincere faith, go all the way back to the source of truth and it'll build up your faith in that. Right. And, and in a couple chapters here, we'll see in chapter three that all scripture is given by inspiration of God to thoroughly furnish us yeah, that's right. for every good work. It just it prepares us mind, body, mm-hmm. spirit for every good work. Uh, you know, um, this faith that Paul is writing to Timothy about is worth living for. It's worth fighting for. Yeah. And it's worth dying for. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want him to be ashamed of the faith. Uh, and ashamed of Paul. We'll see that in the next study. And so he really starts this letter out by encouraging him to reach down deep, remember what he's anchored in, yeah. and be true to God and be true to himself mm-hmm. and hang in there. It's going to get pretty tough. And trust what God provides him. So I think there are times in our prayer life, Matt, where we have to ask God to do what he's promised to do for us. How, many, how often do we grab and try to fix the things and do the things of our own strength, our own wisdom, our own power, and 
He's saying, okay, the spirit of God that he's given to you can do these things. Are you letting him? Are you asking him for that help? And Yeah, and we did overlook actually verse 6 a little bit to where he was given a specific ministry to true. do. And yeah. whatever this gift is, it was a gift for him to, yes, to do work in the kingdom with, mm -hmm. right? It, it may have been a gift of administration or, or, or whatever, but it, it probably was teaching and proclaiming. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was Paul's gift that he mentioned in the previous letter. And uh, he has had his uh, someone lay his hands on him, Paul here, and impart to him this gift. So he's being true to that too. Yep. And he's got his nose to the grind mm -hmm. and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. So with this new spirit, uh, he's saying, rekindle it, yep. you know, that's keep it, point. keep it blazing. One commentator said, yeah. and do the work that's set before you to do. And he talks about that in the next chapter here a that's little a bit point. about what, what is that work exactly that you do right now yeah. that matters so much. And you know, that's, so there's a sincere faith. There's the power of what God is able to do. But like you point out, linking those two is, I would call this controlling what we can control, right? <laughs> yeah. Like how much of our worry and shipwrecked of our faith happens because we're trying to control things outside of our control, whether it's national elections or the environment in which the church can meet. It's like th things are bigger than us sometimes. But he's saying, Timothy, focus on what, be faithful over what you have been called to do. Have a sincere faith and trust power of God. And if you, you, that's why he's saying you already have what you need to be able to do this. Yes. Yeah. And so do you, if you're a Christian and so do we. And so uh, let's pray that we can be rekindled and mm -hmm. stirred up and encouraged to do the work that's set before us um, and to do it fearlessly. That's right. All right. Father in heaven, uh, we come to you at the close of this study, thankful that you have instilled courage in us through a spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. Amen. Father, when we sin, when we stray, it is because of fears, human fears. It is because of a lack of faith. And we repent of that. Father, we ask you to give us the, uh, the strength and courage, the love to, um, to do your work for your purpose um, and to help people come to know you more fully. May we never stray, but may we always walk with you hand in hand. And all those who are listening, Father, I pray for them for the same. In Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Take care. Bye.